This is the last lesson on this week, and now we will consider the quantum parallelism, which is the fundamental property of any quantum algorithm. This feature is based on the principle of quantum superposition. In fact, quantum parallelism allows a quantum computer to calculate the value of a certain function f at many points at once. So, for a set of arguments values x1, x2, xn, we will obtain a set of function f values in this point. points. f of x1, f of x2, and so on, f of xn, as a result of only one unitary transform u. Let's illustrate the idea of quantum parallelism with a simple example. Consider a function f of x with a single bit range and a single bit domain. So, the argument x accepts two values, 0 and 1, and also the function f can be equal to 0 or 1. Let's see how such a function can be calculated by a two-qubit quantum computer that works by quantum parallelism. So, the first qubit is a computer's input is in the state x, and the second one is in the state y. Thus, the initial state at the computer's input is a tensor product of the states x and y. Suppose that the computer keeps the first qubit unchanged and brings the second qubit in a state that corresponds to a modulo 2 addition of y and f of x. This transformation can be implemented by a certain sequence of logical gates, which we considered it last week. We denoted that sequence by u sub f. In fact, the u sub f transform is, is itself as a set uh, of logical operations that a com quantum computer must perform. The explicit form of this operation depends on a specific task. Now, we are considering a general case and we'll assume this transform to be a black box transform. It means that we don't know of which operation ex exactly it consists. However, since every quantum gate is reversible, any combination of them is also reversible. Thus, the U sub F transform is reversible and unitary. The first register, that is here the X qubit, is usually called data register, and the second register, here it is the second qubit, is called value register. The value register is usually equal to zero and the input, and thus it corresponds to the value of f of x and the output. As we have already mentioned, quantum parallelism is based on the principle of quantum superposition. Let's consider the following situation. Suppose the state of failure register as the output is zero, and the data register is the sum of state vectors one and zero multiplied by a normalization factor one over square root of two. Since our computer is two qubits, such a state of the data register corresponds to the sorting of all possible x values of the function f. Since every transform in u sub f is a linear operator, the u sub f is a linear operator itself, which checks on every term of data register separately. Thus, at the output, we have an equiprobable equi superposition. Every term in the superposition is a tensor product of a state corresponding to a certain value of the argument x and the state corresponding to a value of f of this argument. So, if we go through the all possible values of x at the, uh, at the input, we'll obtain all possible values of f at the output. Each term of the superposition we would get will go with the same probability amplitude. So, for our bit function f, we will obtain a superposition of states 0, f of 0, and 1, f of 1, which go with coefficient 1 over square root of 2. In fact, despite we have used the u sub f transform only once, the output data contains information of f of 0 as well as information of, on f of 1. Uh, this is exactly what we call quantum parallelism. We took a superposition state as a data register at the input and at the output we obtained the super superposition state every term of which corresponds to a certain value of argument x and value of the function of this argument. We note that 
if we perform a measurement of the state, we will only obtain one of the values in the superposition we got. In our example, this can be the value f of 1 or f of 0. After that, one has to perform the whole procedure again, and that's why for calculating the values of f, this procedure of, is of no practical benefit. The thing is, the classical computer also can do such operations and do them more effectively. In order to benefit from the quantum computations, we must learn how to extract more information on a function f from the superposition state. Next time, we will study quantum algorithms that give a recipe for how it can be done. Let us now note in conclusion that all the results we got could be naturally generalized to a multidimensional case. So we'll, soon we will see how it can be done. And that's all for now. Thank you for your attention.